All right, guys, so I'm back again with another video, car video. Um, this is going to be relatively quick. Um, first off, hope I, I hope all y'all are having a good day and a good week so far and are enjoying your summer vacation like I am. Um, I know I put on a couple of pounds, <laughs> but uh, I hope y'all are doing well. And, uh, yeah, I just want to, you know, shout out um, all my subscribers and people that tune in and watch my videos and my content regularly. But um, as the title should be self-explanatory, I'm going to talk about Marco and just Summer League in general because, um, yeah, um, I don't really care about Summer League. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people are looking to, you know, see, get a good look at the rookies and see some of these guys that were drafted. Because, you know, if you're like me, you don't watch college. Maybe you want to go watch them in a semi-pro setting to see what they can actually do. But, um, yeah, man, I don't really care about Summer League. Like, let me be real with you. All these guys got grouped up and said, all right, this is the team. Go practice a couple days. They go out there and hoop with everybody else, right? It's a whole lot more difficult if you've ever played ball. It's a whole lot more difficult to just group up with some dudes and, like, make a run versus like okay you go with your same guys day in and day out and you know everything about them their tendencies what they can do and you can play and i feel like this benefits certain kind of players more than others like first of all if you're a dominant scorer you're going to be a dominant scorer okay i don't care about that if you are a freakish athlete and no one can keep up with you on the floor you're going to be a freakish athlete that no one can keep up with you on the floor if you're a shooter, you're going to be a shooter. Like, you knock your shots down. If you have a high IQ, you're going to understand the nuances and have a high IQ, okay? Now, where that has a little bit of, you know, leeway there is you're not necessarily looking at guys with, like, the full scouting report. So, whereas you can do more things or key in a certain things on players in a regular season because you have more information, more data on them, you can't necessarily do it to the same level. But you can still see, you know, the IQ on display. Those things I expect to see in a summer league, okay? That don't, they don't sway me. So, when we're talking about summer league, only thing I'm really looking at is shooters, like just shooters. Who can knock down open shots, okay? And who can run an offense? Those are the only two things I care about. You know, if I see some guy got the passing skill, okay, I'll make note of that. But the difference is it's a whole different game when you're playing regular season ball with those athletes versus summer league. Summer league is basically college kids and guys who are trying to get onto a roster so they're going to play hard. But these are not guys that, are you know constantly in the league you know con guys who are constantly giving you the business now okc is running you know some of their actual team with giddy and those dudes for good reason because they need to get them reps and they need to get those guys acclimated you'll see teams doing that that's perfectly fine that's understandable but for the most part a lot of these guys are just and i hate to say this word but they're throwaways okay these guys that are trying to like you know, get noticed, get seen, and get picked up by teams. So they're going to play hard, but they're not like seasoned NBA vets. Like, it's different when you're going and attacking Chet Holmgren versus when you're attacking Rudy Gobert. Completely different scenario. It's different when you're being guarded by Malcolm Hill versus when you're being guarded by Caruso, Zoe, Marcus Smart, Lou Dort. Like, complete difference. The speed of the game, you know, the comp the complexity of it, you know, the adjustments, it's completely different. And so I don't value what a lot of these guys are doing in Summer League. You know, and I hate to say that, and some people be like, well, you probably should take that approach. But honestly, what is Summer League going to tell me? I'll give you an example. Ayo Dusumu was shit last year for Summer League. He was terrible. But in the regular season, completely different player completely different player pat will in summer league was killing it but in regular season completely different player on the other end now i have reasons for both why i think that is but my point is still there 
Hell, Zolt basically put up damn near 20, 10, and 7, uh, his summer league, and it put up like 10, 6.9, and 6.1, or something like that, to that effect. Vast difference, okay? So we can't take these things out of context. Now, let's look at Marco Simonovic, because I know everybody's saying, oh, he put up 27, 13, blah, blah, blah. Look, he's been training with Vucha all offseason. He's been in the same, you know, G League team, basically, his whole career, so he knows everything. Like, he, I think even in the G League, he was the guy that was putting up, like, 20 and 10 regularly. But he should be out there putting up 27, 13 and some change. Like, what are we kidding? Like, he should be doing this. He's a third-year pro, basically. He's been there for a while. He has experience with, with the system. He put on a lot of weight, so physically, he's in a better position, a better weight shape than a lot of these other guys that are coming in. Plus, he's got the tutelage of Vooch this past offseason. I know how we feel about Vooch, but this is an all-star level player or has been in the past. His offensive game for center was top five or is top five. So he's been training with him all offseason. He's gained a lot of weight. I think he said he weighs 240 now. I think he was 215 when he first came into the league. It's 25 pounds, man. That makes a difference. Now, let's be real. Marco is not a guy who is going to start. What he is going to do is going to come off the bench. He's going to play a little bit of power four, probably. He's going to play a little bit of center. That's his job. Okay. I don't expect him to get anything more than like maybe 10 or 25 minutes, if that. Okay. So he's not going to have a ton of minutes to sit here and put up these guarding numbers. What I expect more of him in a regular season is more like a 10 and 6 or 10 and 5 guy. I'm just going to keep it real. That, that's what I expect of him. If he does that, high efficiency. If he shows he can knock down a three, even better. You know, um, I know people were talking about his ability to rim protect his blocking and his defense. Great. Good that you did that on rookies and guys that are G League. Let's see you do that when John Moran is coming. Let's see you do that when you got to guard Zion. Let's see you do that with Giannis and some of these other guys, okay? It's not to diminish what he's done. You know, kudos to him. But I'm not taking that shit, you know, serious. Same thing with uh, Terry. You know, he looked—he had too many turnovers. He looked terrible, okay? It's, I'm taking that with a grain of salt, okay? I feel like his role is way too big right now. And once you're playing next to Zoe, Caruso, Ayo, Zach, DeMar, Vooch, and the rest of those guys, his role will be a lot simpler. Defend, knock down shots versus having to create and do all this other stuff that he's really not meant to do right now. And so... I'm not worried about the turnovers and stuff in the passing because he won't be in position to do those things in the regular season. So I'm not going to sit there and say, man, this guy's shit. The same way I'm not going to say, okay, Marco's great. I'm just saying, okay, I see it, note it. Let's wait till the regular season when you have your role and see what you do then when the competition is real and the games count and matter towards something. But anyway, that's all I really want to say. I hope y'all have a good one. Peace.